Welcome once again to the FHS podcast. It is a great pleasure to have a guest uh, with me, Mrs. Sheikha Amrit, the Corporate Vice President of Owner Relationship uh, Management for Tana Hotel. Sheikha, welcome. Thank you so much. It is a pleasure to have you here with us today. Thank you, Marina. It's a pleasure being with FHS Boring. Thank you. How did you find the FHS 2024? Look, I love participating in all events in Riyadh. I feel the energy is great. People are just so, um, so cooperative. They're very excited about the destination. They believe in the, desti- the destination. So we are. Uh, uh, it's a huge, uh, it's a huge country. And there's a lot of potential for everyone. I'm glad that we started on a very positive note. Yes, absolutely. Can you tell me how many hotels Rotana has? And you're basically talking to to the owners. Yes. So how many owners do you have a, re- a relationship with? And how many do you deal? Uh, we have 73 operating hotels. Okay. Globally? Yes. We have 73 operating hotels in 25 cities and 14 countries. We have... Uh, owners that own multiple hotels, so we uh, we deal with around fifty owners. Okay. Yes, and we're very focused on hotel management, so we're a hotel operator. So we don't own, we we manage. You're famous as one of the leaders in the hospitality industry. So, what strategies do you employ to maintain those strong relationship with the owners and your other stakeholders, particularly in Saudi Arabia's very dynamic market? There's a lot that you have to do, uh, Marina, and one of them was we have to stay in touch. Attention is very important, so we have to give our owners the right attention because they trusted us. They trusted us as a brand. We have to always be transparent with them. You cannot overpromise and underdeliver. This is something we always stick for as a company, and especially uh, owners in Saudi Arabia, they're very dynamic. So we're, and we're very close to them. We, 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 we always feed them with the latest trends, latest updates. We will always have to propose to them the right brand that fits their need and fits the location or the destination there, of course. And what, regarding the, the rise of tourism in Saudi Arabia, how does you adapt your services, your operates to cater to this, well, quite evolving needs and preferences of tourists that are coming Look, Marina, that's a very interesting question. Us as a brand, uh, we we want to focus on the mid scale, okay, uh, in a, in a way because you have a lot of operators that are focused on ultra luxury, and we see that there is still a need for uh, mid scale and mid upper scale brands to to penetrate in the market, and that was where good. Uh, we always like to engage a lot of talent. And a lot of uh, the right uh, small businesses and all the in, in whatever whatever destination we operate, like let's say in in high end, let's say in Medina, we will try as much as we can to uh, integrate a lot of things related to the destination we're operating from. Because what's good about Saudi is it's very rich in culture and it's very rich in history. So we will you would either, for example, uh, engage young Saudi talent, artists that can display to the guests things related to the culture that we will be operated from, let's say in Hayan, in Asir, and in Hassa. Telling a story to the guests is very important. It is. This is something we can use, whether through our F&B concepts, whether through uh, well, the artwork displayed in, in the hotel, whether through the material we use, and in so many other ways as well. So it's very important for us to be close to the supply chain, the Saudi supply chain, and engage them wherever we we, we, we we find fit and suit. And it's very interesting that also you're doing this in a mid-market segment, yes. which we were just talking yesterday here at the event. Yes. And the Giga projects have about 82% of hotels just in uh, upper upscale and luxury markets, and there is such a potential in this mid market segment. Like if, for example, and an Ola and the Red Sea, you just have the luxury operators. I think for them to to uh, cater for the mass and for other people that want to visit an Ola and can afford it, it's very important for them to um, penetrate or to uh, cater for that. 
in that particular segment. And not only uh, is Rapana, you yourself yes. are a big leader, yeah. especially uh, women lead in yes. the industry. How do you think that we can collectively as an industry enable and empower more women to think about this? Marina, women are already empowered, Christopher. They just need the right support. We we need the people to believe in us and believe in what we can do. I think we also need to believe in ourselves. We have to believe in ourselves, and we have to acknowledge and and uh, recognize the good things that we contributed to this week. And there is a lot, like us in the um, in, in, in in Saudi, particularly thirty percent of our Saudi workforce represent women. That's and they are great leaders. Like I've met a lot of them during my time, uh, during our, our visits to Riyadh. And we can't find better representation than women because you want people from the country to be the best ambassadors and the best representatives to the culture and to the country. I think we'll, we will come for the, the world very soon. We will. We win. Thank you so much for being here. So Thank you so much for supporting our pages for so many years. And we are, of course, looking forward to the future years of great cup. FHS has been a great partner to us, and we will be more than happy to support them. They've been very supportive to us as well, and we're one team. So we are. Looking forward to participate in future conferences together. Amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time, Marina. Thank, Thank you so much.